I, uh... Hello. You're going to turn right in a minute and you're going to see something different about our bike, my bike. That means... Oh, to... I'm turning right now. Yeah, buddy. right. Well, yeah, they're the Lone Rider bags. We're going to talk about Lone Rider bags today. However... A decent size adventure <laughs> bike. <laughs> I got rid of the baby GSA and I picked up this little monster. He only got it because of the gold wheels. I did. It's a really nice colour scheme, actually. It is very nice, isn't it? Isn't it? it? And the best thing about it is it's three years old. Yeah. It's been serviced every year and it's only got 1,300 miles on it. Unbelievable. You're no longer a member of Rider Cam TV. It's not a new bike. <laughs> so that's no, a, it's a nice bike. It is. I like the colours. Lovely colours. Yeah. Although I'm not so oh, sure come on. about the leather on the seat. That's going to get quite dirty and that red's faded, isn't it? You're going no, to have to buy no, another bike. No, no, <laughs> no. Anyway, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about low rider bags. Yeah. And how I got on with them. Are they good bags? Awesome. Are they my favourite bags at the moment? Yeah, they are. I've taken my boom box. I've still got the top box, but I'm trying to work out a way of not having the top box. Yeah. I don't know why. We'll just, just take it off. What a great idea. <laughs> anyway, Lone Rider bags. I have just come back from a tour to the Swiss and Austrian Alps and I had these bags with me. Mm -hmm. And did they perform well? They performed awesomely well. Awesomely well? Awesomely well. Is that, is that acceptable? Yeah, that's, that a, made that? that's a really good claim, isn't it? I love them. I love them, love them, love them. Um, we've also got, when this bike got this bike, it had a set of BMW Atacama luggage on it, which yeah. I used for a few uh, few days, travelling battles and forwards. Couldn't get on with it. Mm -hmm. We've done a review about that, you'll see them. Have nowhere near the same capacity as these bikes. Or, or build quality or, or anything, build, really. Anything. Well, I think the build quality's all right. It's just, the build quality's good, but just not suitable for what I would need. Yeah. So, anyway, there we go. So. One problem I had with the Lone Rider bags yeah. was that inside here, underneath this, because it's obviously a soft luggage, yeah. there's a hard piece of something in here, in there to give it its strength. Behind this silver plate on the inside is a black plate. Okay. And these, see here, these are screw heads. And if I show you on the inside, if you can see that, you will see the three screws. Yeah. Okay, and the black plate. While I was away, the screws obviously became loose. They've been, apparently they're Loctited in, but they hadn't had enough Loctite on them. So that's just one of those things that while you're on tour, you don't realize, you don't recognize that necessarily. So they, they fell out. And as a result of that, with only having two screws in, this got bent, the black plate, and then eventually the last screw fell off. Oh, okay. Which means that when I was folding the bag up, because the silver plate fell off, this bottom piece here means I couldn't Which lock piece? this piece here. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't actually lock physically. Oh, close that's the bike why it started bending. And lock it? it. Okay. All right. So because the screws had fallen out, it bent the uh, it bent the plate underneath. However, I was still able to close the bag. Yeah. Because it's got these on the top, and still able to fasten the inside bag so it's waterproof. Yeah. So even though that wasn't there to hold it closed, if you want. That basically is just the lockable bit. Well, yeah, because I suppose that that silver thing is just the lock. It, that's you just it's add, an added added adaption to keep it shut, isn't it? But with those two straps, yeah. So you know, it's not going to. It come still out. remains watertight. This would be folded up underneath anyway, and that was fine. So got hold of Lone Rider Anna at Lone Rider. Explained the situation. Sent a picture of what I was uh, explaining to her. Picture paints a thousand words. Yeah. And uh, they sent me the replacement parts and fixed. Excellent. Happy boy again. Replacement parts up the yin yang. Absolutely. Now, this is the Lone Rider bag, the waterproof bag, which fits in the, the almost waterproof um, uh, outer bag. Yeah. I say almost because there's a, there's a plastic filler that goes in on the inside that keeps the, sh the bag its shape. Yeah. Underneath the bag, there's holes to allow water to run out if should any, I suppose if you go through a river or something, should any get in there. Yeah. But these bags here are the inner bags and they are waterproof. Yeah. 
And this one here is the 38 litre bag, so it fits in this, the bigger of the two bags. Yeah. So one's 38 and this one's 32. Yeah. I had an issue with this because you'll see in the photographs, the bags weren't overloaded, all right? And so when you roll them up, obviously using the low rider system, yeah. like this, to maintain their waterproofness, yeah. or whatever, they clip down like that, and I've deliberately left all the air in to give it a bit of bulk. You have handles, and you have straps that come over the top. Yeah, so you've got extra securing so over the top. So you've got extra securing. To be honest, Lone Rider, if you could find a way of not hanging these straps, I think that would be a good thing. Whether you could fasten them, make it a way of closing them in the middle like yeah. this and then just using these, I think that might be better. But what do I know? You guys have done all the research. However, the reason I say that is because lifting the bag out one day, I managed to snag it. Yeah. Okay, and I actually tore the bag here. Somehow, it got caught inside the, the main bag as I was lifting it out, snagged it, and it pulled that apart. So what you're saying is that the manufacturing process was sound, the use of you taking them in and out your panniers was the one that, oh, this is snagged, I'll just yank it even more. And it I can't admit, that's oh, probably okay. what happened. Right, anyway, okay. again, I spoke to lovely Anna, oh. and uh, she sent me a replacement bag. Oh, really good. Okay, so, you know, all it was is just this bit of stitching came came away from the, from the I suppose yeah. this is vulcanised in And some the thing way. is, it's not meant, it's meant to, meant for pressure to keep it down, but it's not meant for pressure against yanking, is no. it? No. But, you know, as, as I was pulling it out, that's yeah. what happened. Okay. So there we go. Awesome bag, by the way. Yeah. Photographs will show how much I had in. Now, issues I had with it. I'm five foot ten, and the bag is upright like that. It's five foot eight. <laughs> it's, you can see how tall it is. Yeah. Okay. You can, actually. Let me come out a little bit. Yeah. You're, it's almost up to your chin. And that's the bike on the side stand. This is my... The bag I take to work, some of you recognise it as a post bag. I'm not a postman. Postman but Mark, a, postman Mark. Really, really good pannier bags. Yeah. All right, they're designed to fit over a bike in the UK, a push bike. Yeah. You've got clips you can clip it on. Yeah. So you can actually use it as a side pannier. Uh, it's not waterproof, but it does have a clip on the side. Anyway, this is the bag I use to go to work. But you can see the problem I have. Because this is so tall, if there's any weight in this bag, you then have to become an Olympic weightlifter to lift. <laughs> you can see what's happening. Try and fit this bag in, which is a big bag, by the way. Yeah. And I'm very pleased with it. The point I'm trying to make is you've got to lift it that high to get it into that bag. But then it just disappears inside. I mean, it's a huge... <laughs> it's cavernous, isn't it? It's cavernous. You get a small child in there. You can do. There is one. <laughs> okay. Let me out. So, the bag I tend to use this one here for is the the bigger of the two bags, the 38 litre bag, which is on the left hand side of the bike. I don't have to lift this bag as far, but it still can be a bit of a faff if yeah. the bag has any weight in it. But if you look inside, come around, you can see how much space. There is inside that bag There's now. There's loads, isn't there? Because this rim here is the top of the actual bag. So, using the... Tried and tested tried method of sealing tested. the bag. Method of sealing the bag. So he's got this off to a team. I have, because I absolutely love them. And I don't know how I managed with hard panniers for so long. There you go. Everything's adjustable, so you can have that yeah. Bag fuller if you want, and obviously the padlock. See, that's for me. That's the bit that I don't necessarily like is having a padlock. I like to be able to just have a key, and the padlock seems a bit cumbersome for me. But that, you know, it's a personal choice, isn't it? It is, and I'll be honest. I don't leave anything in there that you know. If, if it's somebody steals it, it's, it's not going to worry me. And I was thinking about just getting a carabiner, you know, just as a secure, yeah. just to secure it. Not necessarily have the padlock, but while it's there, I'll, I'll use it. I don't. And know they're good they're... padlocks, to be fair. They're cracking padlocks. 
combination padlock, you set the combination, yeah. so it's really easy. And that's the bag. Handles so it's all, it almost, almost as if, on this one here, that if they'd have, if you can hold that up there, Mark. Can do. Almost as if, if they'd have had some sort of way of joining this so you could undo that and flap it out. So that one stays up there. This, this is kind of like a join there and the other side that that flaps down and then Velcros back up. So you can just put stuff in there like that rather than having to lift things from the top. I don't know how that would affect the waterproof. Well, I think that might affect how waterproof it is. Maybe if they reduce this in some way, or I don't know, I don't know. I... Or perhaps it's just one of those things you've just got to get used to. Perhaps it's just getting used to Or the... just put lighter things in this side. Yeah, just don't carry so much. <laughs> well, there's not that much in it, but the system works. It works really, really well, and they're awesome bags. I went through some horrendous weather on, on, the, Span on the Swiss Tour. There was water trapped inside the top of the bag when I lifted yeah. it, because, you know, water gets in everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. But actual water ingress inside the bag, there was none at all. Wow. Um, and then you've, so you've got the waterproof inner bag, okay, which is fine. Somebody made a comment while I was on the tour saying, there was no compartments inside the bag. Why would you need it? <laughs> my point exactly, you know, just everything gets rolled up and pushed in anyway. So the way I work my, on my tours is, this is the smaller panier. I've got a computer in here and bits and pieces, paperwork and, yeah. and you know, stuff I'm never get, not necessarily gonna use all the time. In this one here, the bag is not much fuller than that normally, even on a long tour, three weeks. No, and that's what fits inside there. Well, and the thing about those red bags is that they hold their shape yes. so that you can pack them. So rather than them being round bags that you're putting in a square hole, they're square bags when they're stood up and you're packing them, aren't they? So yep. it makes it easier. It's almost like having a metal pannier that goes inside another metal pannier. Exactly. So this is empty when I'm touring. Yeah, mine is too, just for the helmet on. And, you know, a bit yeah. of paperwork if I need it. Well, you know, I, I use the, the um, top box primarily to take an overnight bag for the ferry. So I leave everything on the bike, if it's an overnight ferry. That top box has my helmet and gloves in, so I'm ready to go first thing in the morning. I take my bag out, go up to the cabin, get changed, come back, switch it, switch it all over next morning, ready to go. What's an insight into the living habits of Toby on a, t on a bike tour? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So. My bag is actually not much fuller, fuller than that, so I don't mind taking it. But yeah, yeah. Lone Rider bags. Love them, love them, love them! Do they work? Amazingly well. Will they last? We've had them now for a couple of months, and uh, got tour coming up to Croatia, which will have a mixture of cold weather, hot weather, rain, and all the rest of it in uh, a couple of weeks' time. So we'll see how we get on with there. But I am very, very confident that these perform well. Mm -hmm. they, they do look nice bags. Loads of comments of people. Really Loads do look nice bags. When I was on tour saying, oh, how are they performing? Love them. And then they were saying, you know, oh, I'd love to get something like that. Definitely better than the OEM BMW boxes. Yeah. I think. Well, the OEM boxes are really thin. And the, the lid is good. You can open it both sides, but then they get taken by the wind. They're really sharp. You've got to watch your hands. Huge That's huge why expensive. I have Boomot. Boomot? Yeah. And by the way, just before we go, have a look at this bad boy, Magellan Motorcycle Tours. £100 off any tour that you want to go with the code uh, that's on our website. It'll, it'll be in the description. <laughs> you got to remember yeah. it. 100 quid. it's not bad, is it? Yep, that's worth doing. Yeah, so, yeah. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We love Lone Rider bags. They're not sponsoring us. This is an honest review. Rips and tears and snags and all the rest of it. And we'll see you soon.